India Canada stalemate continues. India today is the first Indian media to reach outside the Gurdwara in Canada's Surrey, where Hardeep Singh Nijar, a designated terrorist by India, was shot dead on June 18. India today also found Khalistani flags and posters targeting Indian diplomats that have not been removed from the Gurdwara building. Watch this world exclusive report filed by my colleague Anisha Mathur. At the epicenter of the India-Canada diplomatic storm, India today outside the Gurudwara in Surrey, in Canada's British Columbia province, where Hardeep Singh Nijjar, designated as a terrorist by India, was shot dead by two men in hoodie sweatshirts on June 18th. India today, the first in the media to reach this location for authentic ground reporting. Contrary to Canadian news reports, we found that Khalistani flags and posters targeting Indian diplomats have not been removed from the Gurudwara building. On the very other side of the Gurudwara gates, a poster very clearly calling for the assassination of Indian diplomats still very much outside the Gurudwara. While they may have removed a couple of the posters, the rest very clearly still exist right here. Sari's Guru Nanak Singh Gurudwara, Nijja led the administration of this sacred site from 2019 until his death on June 18th. The Canadian law is very clear that while you can protest, while you can ask for a referendum, calling for violence or incitement of hatred against a particular group of people, an identified group of people, is not allowed under Canadian law. Canada pointed fingers at India for the murder that took place outside the Sari Gurudwara. India has rejected the accusations from the word go. The Indian media and the Indian government as well as the Canadian government must ask why are these posters calling for assassination of Indian diplomats still up in the Gurudwara at Sari right here behind me. Anisha Mathur bringing you the reports from the ground from Sari BC for India Today. My colleague Anisha Mathur spoke to Ujjal Dusanj, the first Indian origin minister of Canada. He spoke on several issues from the sliding Indo-Canadian ties, the roots of the Khalistani movement in Canada and why Justin Trudeau's hobnobbing with Sikh extremists has created trust issues with the Indian government. Listen in. So over the years you've held, you've worn a lot of hats in Canada and Canadian politics. Right now, the way things are going, first of all, how do you see the diplomatic standoff? Do you see a solution coming in any time soon? I don't, uh, at least not for a while, until all of the evidence is shared um, with India or at least made public. Um, perhaps the conclusion of the investigation by the police might uh, bring some uh, calming influence or, in fact, uh, it might uh, agitate people more. Uh, one, it remains to be seen. At this moment, I think uh, we are at a standstill. Um, I hear India says that they haven't been given any evidence other than the bald allegations that were made. Um, there's been some evidence in the newspapers um, about how the murder took place. Um, there's a video recording of, of a minute and a half or something, and I think Washington Post reported it. But beyond that, I mean, we're all kind of wrestling in the dark. So since uh, I would uh, request you to put on an old hat as former attorney general, as a lawyer who has a very deep understanding of the laws here in BC and in Canada, at the moment, the way things are being discussed, at the moment, the allegations that um, there wasn't a proper investigation, how do you see that and its effect on both the investigation itself and the larger debate on this issue? Well, I think it's a well-known fact that the investigation has been underway. Um, whether the investigation has been impaired by the revelations made by the Prime Minister remains to be seen. Should the Prime Minister have made a statement of the nature that was made during an ongoing investigation? Doesn't that uh, have a negative effect? Um, it may, may not, but the... Uh, Police in this country, in my experience, 
really don't care whether you're the Prime Minister of the country or the Chief Justice of the country. They'll do the right thing in 99.9% .9 of the cases. Now, following the heightened tensions between India and Canada due to the assassination of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar, Bangladesh has now voiced its own grievances against Canada's extradition policies. At the heart of this controversy is Canada's refusal to extradite Noor Chaudhry, the self-confessed assassin of Bangladesh's founding father, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Listen in to this exclusive conversation. This is an India Today exclusive. It's not just India that has been concerned about fugitives, wanted men of India uh, finding safe haven in Canada. Bangladesh is another country that has been struggling with uh, many fugitives, particularly Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the, found, uh, the, the father of uh, Bangladesh uh, as a nation, uh, his killers in Canada too. And they have been trying very hard to get them extradited. To discuss more on the recent India-Canada row and the situation between Bangladesh and Canada, I'm being joined by none other than the Foreign Minister of Bangladesh himself, Minister A.K. Abdul Momin. Thank you so much for joining us here on India Today, sir. Thank you very much, and I also thank your audience and your viewers. Right, sir. Let's begin with uh, the India-Canada row. How do you look at this entire row between India and Canada over wanted men who are in India who have been killed in Canada? Canada alleges that there is Indian involvement. India has rejected those allegations. Where do you see this? How do you see the row in itself with visas being suspended, ties almost on a breakdown? You see, we have very good relationship rock solid relation with India, and also we have good relation with Canada. Both countries are friends. Now, I don't know the detail of this issue uh, between India and Canada, uh, but I know that, you know, we have a problem with Canada. And that's about, we have one of the killers of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, you just mentioned, you see, his killer is having a good life in Canada. He has been there, and uh, we have been trying to, we have been requesting Canadian government to send back that self-confessed self kill, self killer of Bangabandhu, our father of the nation. But unfortunately, right. the Canada is not uh, listening to us. And uh, they have come up with varieties of excuses so we also went to the Canadian court to understand what is his status. Because he's staying in Canada for a long time. And we want to know whether he's a Canadian citizen or not. So we, uh, we started a case in the Canadian court. And Canadian, you know, the honorable judges made a you know, verdict. They said that Canadian government has no reason not to disclose his status. But yet, Canadian government is not telling us anything, neither sending. Only thing they tell us that they have a law that any individual, if he's, if he's sent back to his own country, and if there is a capital punishment in that country, then the, that part, as per that law, they cannot serve that individual. So we are saying that Canada must not be, Canada is a government, is a government to rule of law. They believe in legal system. Canada must not be hub of all the murderers. The murderers, they can go to Canada and take shelter and they can have wonderful life. While those who he killed and their relatives, they are suffering. So we have been asking Canadian government to deport that new children. They know it. But unfortunately, currently they don't even, uh, you know, talk to us on this issue. 